for me, the the socially regenerative permaculture is very interesting. Yeah, regional resilience, uh, cultural bridge building. I bless them. I've been there. Uh, I, I understand what that ideology comes from. Hello, and welcome to the Permaculture Vine podcast. My name's Cormac Harkin, and today we have Jason Thomas. Welcome, Jason. Hey, Cormac. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thank you for agreeing to come on. Can you just give us a wee quick introduction, please, first? A quick introduction. Okay. Uh, that's that's possible. <laughs> I, <laughs> now I live in Costa Rica, and uh, I, I started this podcast called Regeneration Nation Costa Rica. And I've been focusing on highlighting and promoting and networking uh, regenerative projects around the country. I started off focusing on like permaculture farms and intentional communities, places like that. And I, uh, after about a year doing that, I rebranded and I, I decided to go off land and talk also to consultants and permaculture teachers that, you know, help other people with their projects and um, just other, actually my last episode I released was a woman who's doing work with Alzheimer's. I feel like for me, the, the socially regenerative permaculture is very interesting and important. And my next episode is going to be with uh, someone, Atiko talking about social permaculture and what he's doing in the city. Uh, so that's, yeah, regional resilience, uh, cultural bridge building, being in Costa Rica and being a bridge between the the foreigners and the locals. I speak Spanish quite well now, and and I interact quite a lot with the the local organizations, and that's really important to me too. And so, yeah, I have all these passions developing through my brand to just really promote and network a better world, and it's been coming through in all kinds of really interesting ways. Great invitations are coming from the community side and both uh, on the ground and online and et cetera. So I'm, I'm being a servant. I threw myself out there, not really knowing what I was going to get into when I started podcasting. I just knew I wanted to start serving this, like what at the time we called impact center crowd. These like permaculture farms and retreat centers and small communities that want to do something where they invite other people in to have these life-changing experiences and learn stuff. And, and I, there's so many of these cool projects. I ran one for a bunch of years and I spent my twenties visiting them. And so um, I'm just in service to that movement and I've expanded to some of the large regenerative na neighborhood developments, these eco villages. And that's some of my recent work and I'm still focused just in the Pueblos and the people and building community gathering spaces and stuff. So it's kind of what I'm into right now. So we can get that in a minute, but if we go right back to the start, how did you how did you get into permaculture and how did it come about in your life? And how do you tell us that story? Well, for me, permaculture is so much more than land management. And so I'd have to say when I first started developing a mindset that was permaculture-esque, um I'd have to say was when I first learned about the standard food systems, industrialized food systems. And I was about 21, 22 around there. And, and I learned about, and I was sick for, since I was 17, I had ulcers and indigestion and just standard civilized food system sicknesses. Um, and I found this really beautiful, brilliant, shining 80 year old woman and asked her what she was up to. And she's like, oh, my daughter teaches these classes on nutrition and Chinese herbs. And we have this network marketing company called Sunrider. And so I got there and I started learning about how the body works and that there's like a, a really just common sense, efficient way to maintain our bodies for wellness. And that the illness that I'd experienced all my life in my family um, cancers and diabetes and, and obesity and all the heck indigestion, constipation, all that was just, it was just from food. It was just from lies of an industrialized nation that was out for profiteering. And I, uh, 
So I, I don't know. I was young and rebellious and I, and I snapped into the raw food diet and meditation and yoga and, and uh, reading books and got rid of my TV and just had a massive life change and uh, really dove deep for about a year. And then I walked out into the desert and literally I left Phoenix, Arizona and walked out into the desert for 10 days till I got to California. And then I started hitchhiking for the next six years, living out of my backpack, uh, tying balloon animals to pay my way. And I visited a lot of permaculture farms over those days. I was one of the guys, I was one of the people just like looking for a work trade opportunity. I had my balloon animals. I could, I always had money in my pocket. You know, I could bring some, my own food or pay when I needed to, but I, I learned how to be of service and how to help people and how to learn. And I was just like, I knew that, you know, when I walked out in the desert, I just knew that I didn't want the city life. I just didn't want to participate. I had a, I was, I was renting a car and renting a house just so I could live in a city where the only thing I really left the house for was to go to the co-op or go hiking in the desert or go tie balloon animals at steak food and seafood restaurants, which I didn't really believe in their food system anyhow. So I was just in this, like the hamster wheel of work in a gig somewhere. I like to do in the balloon art. That was cool, but I was supporting like families bringing their kids to a restaurant. I didn't like believe in what they were eating. And I was just like, why am I contributing to this? And yeah. And I walked away from society and I walked out, shaved my head and walked out into the desert and, and kept going forward and new invitations, new learnings, new, I was anonymous for six years in some new place all the time. And, uh, I transformed and through that permaculture just found its way into lots of my situations. Lots of the people that hosted me, I turned, learned this and that from, and, um, and then eventually I was gifted with the opportunity to co-found a permaculture education center here in Costa Rica. Um, after a few years in Minnesota, I drove down here in a veggie oil school bus with my girlfriend at the time and her two young kids. And we bought a farm and, did homesteading and invited volunteers. I wanted to host all these people looking for work exchanges like I'd done all of my life and or my adult life. And and we had a go of it. And uh, we, we, we went through a process that I'm going through now of using the permaculture design process to revamp our education center that was not supporting itself. And uh, after some years of having a lot of fun and changing people's lives and learning and growing, we we were we just we were we had to shut the doors we couldn't didn't have money we couldn't fix stuff we couldn't take care of our own needs and stuff because we we weren't in balance we were running on our ideals you know we were, we were part of the the anti-ism anti-money anti-business anti-permits anti-documents and agreements and doing it ourselves and profiting and all of this stuff and we're just like we're suffering <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, my ex wife pulled out the. Go ahead. Well, yeah, going on. It's not, I, unless you're making profits or making money, you're not going to sustain yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we were, about to, we were giving away the farm. Yeah. <laughs> we were giving away the farm. We, that phrase is so right there. We we're trying to do too much for the benefit of others and not really working on a solid plan. Our gardens were gorgeous. We reforested several acres of uh, pasture land and it's a booming food forest right now. And the structures, you know, a lot of them still need repair because we were not finishing them. We weren't putting the, the effort into doing everything really well. Uh, we're just kind of, which is cool. You know, we, we had experiences, but we had, got to a point where like the way we're doing things, not treating the wood, for instance, like we're replacing floorboards and we've been here for three years. Like what, what are our decisions really leading us to now we have to cut down more trees because we didn't want to paint a little bit of sealant on that wood, you know? And, and it's just like, we started learning from our observations over some time. And, and so we pulled out the, the whole permaculture design process and applied it to our business and our family life and how we've hosted guests. And we just looked for all the places that energy was leaking from the system and where there were edges we weren't taking cons into consideration and where we weren't valuing the marginal and just like losing. And it was phenomenal. It took three months. We invented the process as we went just to with, you know, just close the doors. It was just us and our kids. And, and it revolutionized 
how we related to our project and how we invited people in and systems that we built to automate this and that. And this was back in the day before, you know, now I've been studying business and, and automation systems and tools and tactics, marketing, all this stuff for six years now, but this is before all that. And we still made a huge improvement on what we were doing. And so now that I have been studying the business world, I know that projects like mine needed this information, that it was not a resilient thing to do, to be pushing away the, the business tactics that make successful <laughs> operations successful. Like we wanted to be successful. We wanted more people to come to our events. We wanted to teach more people and you can't teach what you can't sell. Cause if you can't sell it, nobody comes. And then <laughs> you're just, you know, um, try and, and speak into a few people that have already been there for a month, helping you volunteer to put the thing on and they're your students too, you know? So anyhow, that's, that's my that's mission right now is to bridge <laughs> the old me to yeah. the me that I wish could have been more successful. That's a lot. To unpack. That's, that. Yep. That's a lot to unpack. Uh, how have you found uh, the pushback on this? Because I, I still think I'm going to put the site up. Uh, that's not permaculture.com and just put all examples of people tell me what isn't, isn't permaculture and money and business is right <laughs> up there at the top. Uh <laughs> Permaculture is not business. Permaculture is not money. It's free, and it, it's all these ideas. And I'm thinking, well, have you had, have you had a, a much pushback as well? Hey, yeah, of course. I mean, who who doesn't, to some degree or not? You know, yeah. like that's we live in a world of duality. Like, welcome to planet Earth. <laughs> um, there's always going to be yeah. naysayers and people with this opinion and that. Um, I bless them. I've been there. Uh, I, I understand what that ideology comes from. It's got best of intentions. We've, we've seen so much corruption and degenerative practices in the business world and, and profiteering and, and people just lost contemplative perspective of the difference between profiting and profiteering. Profiting is being able to sustain what you're doing in a way that grows and benefits more people and meets your, your needs and uh, allows you to live a life. That's the fullest expression. And then profiteering is like the total unfair, imbalanced money grab at the expense of the other forms of capital. Right. And so people are confused. They're, 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 they're watching all the social media bashing of this big corp and that. And with all the good reasons, all the obvious reasons, I've just been doing this 25 years. I've already known about the ills of the world for a long time that I've gone through my cycles and of rebel and againstness. And I'm coming to like, oh, these are actually just like everything. The, all the tools, these tactics, business, the practice, making money, exchange of energy, like all of it's neutral. And we, if we apply, depending on what principles we apply to the, the techniques, the tools, that gives them meaning. That gives them the expression. Those are all tools, like doing market research. I can do that to learn how to best help someone and let them know that I can help them or I can do market research to learn how to underhandedly deceive them into buying something degenerative or doing something that's not in their best interest or get for my own greed and, and self fulfillment and market research is just talking to people. Market research is just, looking and learning what people want and don't want and what they're willing to do or what's keeping them from doing the thing they know they want to do and whatever, whatever the market research is, how, what, what the best flavor that they like or, but the principles behind the use of that tool that changes everything. And so I just came to, I lived in an area down here where there's a high concentration of people like you're talking about. They, they, they down talk business, money, profit, um, all that stuff as kind of a cultural gravitation, the anteism, I call it. 
the againstness and uh, anti-establishmentarianism, you know? Um, and it just gets out of hand to the point that they're like looking at their friend who's doing super good works in that world, putting on a retreat that's really changing people's lives. And because it's outside of their budget, instead of just being like, you go, man, I hope you get the right people for your thing. They're going like, oh, you're overcharging for that thing. And it's just like, oh, or instead of being like, hey, can I co-create with you and maybe get a discount? Cause I'd really love to do it, but I just don't have that money. You know, instead of like creating a solution out of it, they're just like, oh, a problem, you know? And so I got affected by that and I really started to see the duality in it and how much we really need to embrace the tools of business money oh man the more money you give me friend i will tell you i will do the most beautiful things with it i will inspire and empower and bring people together with as much money as i can get right and yeah. when i'm struggling <laughs> i'm no good to nobody yeah i think you have to put on your own it's like in a plane crash you put on your own oxygen first and then you can help others yeah. Um, so, so what, that's what would you I think about the people that are stuck in that mindset is they just haven't seen the full picture yet. And what would you say to them? And I know you can't convince people, but is there anything that you would sort of push them in the right direction? They sort of change that mindset, and because the more the more people are benefiting and profit, the more help it is, and the more the sort of the more good people can do. Well, the more I do consulting for entrepreneurs. And I find this like coaching element coming in. I don't really focus heavily on that. I tried to keep it to the practicals, but the more I learn about meeting people where they're at, and this is part of market research too. Like, as I interview people to just learn like what it's like to be them, even though I was similar in one point in my life. And I kind of think I know, but like just to learn, I, I started to ask people questions more than tell them what I think. Um, especially like podcast interviewing too. Like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, do you believe that? Is that true? Is that really true? Like, why do you believe that? Is that true? Like what? Oh, okay. Well, you know, and eventually getting to like, if that's not, not really maybe true, what would you prefer to believe that is true? You know? And, and it's just like, sometimes we have these limiting beliefs that really close us into a world we don't want to see. And if somebody tells us that defenses go up because we're already justified in why we think that, but when we can l encourage others to lower their own guard by getting to the root of why they really believe that and what that does for them, how that's serving them, or is there another belief that could serve them better, that could produce a different experience of living and seeing the world? That's what I do when I'm, when I'm stuck in a mind trip about something, a judgment or a lull, you know, sadness or a anger or frustration. It's like, okay, dude, like, I get it. I get it. Where is that going to get you? Where do you want to get? What do you got to believe to get there? And can you make that, can you see that true? Make that your truth. And it's a retraining. And we, and, and it helps if you allow people to, to get there on their, their own without it, it and like disarm that defensiveness. Yeah. That's a, a, it's a good idea. It's a more subtle approach. Uh, so say for someone who likes myself, I'm a uh, designer wants to get stuck on these things and I want to start a business. Is, is there any sort of gen what's the most sort of common thing people come to you with the problem that they you know how how do they get on the business? How do they start making a making a living out of permaculture? Would you have any advice for them? Well, that interesting yeah, I'm I'm actively putting together a program. So I've been doing a lot of research on exactly that. I've been uh meeting with students from my permaculture course. I took an online course with like 150 people recently. And so I've been having conversations with several of them, getting to know like, you know, I would say the most things that are stopping new permaculture students from getting into design work. And now 
again, I'm narrowing the permaculture profession to doing design and implementation work just for the sake of this particular um, focus I've been narrowing in on in my research. Although it's brought up some interesting alternatives, but one new, most students go through 72 hours or ish or more of lecture and whether it's a two week class on site somewhere or an online class, you get almost no hands-on experience. And which is why I'm a big proponent for month long classes. I know they're harder to sell, but uh, the, 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 the true value of taking a month long course is invaluable to have those extra couple of weeks for hands-on experience. I think that's one of the biggest things because Imposter syndrome, self-sabotage, limiting beliefs. These are the things that keep humans back from doing the thing that they otherwise could do. It's just the beliefs. And so if you didn't get the experience of getting your hands dirty and like really practicing the things that you can confidently walk into a client situation and be like, oh yeah, I was on this place and we did this thing and, and I totally get it and I'm going to do it for you. Versus like, ah, that's right. They mentioned it for like 20 minutes in that lecture. And I'm pretty sure I know how it works, but you know, that, that the, the difference between those stories and someone's internal dialogue, let alone what they're able to say outwardly is to just stop them. So most people I have been interviewing say like, I just feel like I need more experience. The other thing is business development. Many of them aren't, most entrepreneurs don't have business training. And that's why most small businesses fail. There's a great book, The E-Myth Revisited, where he talks about, you know, a technician who decides to start a business and all of a sudden there's like these more roles. There's the entrepreneur side of them that needs to have its hat time. And then there's the manager and then there's the technician, the person who puts it together. And if somebody's trying to do all three and they're not compartmentalizing that in their mind and heart and workspace, it gets all washed up and nothing, no, none of the roles get taken care of well. And this is just like one of the gazillion things I could talk about new entrepreneurs not setting themselves up for success. And that's something that most permaculture students face is that they just don't know how to start a business. And um, so those are, the, those are two of the things that I'm designing into this course. I'm putting a course together right now. Um, to host on the with the Permaculture Institute of North America, PINA. They've got a Mighty Networks group. And I just created a new space there called Right Livelihood. And I'm just bringing, I've been working on this program for a year solid. And that's after two years of like taking notes and putting ideas together. And I've been really compiling content that nobody's seen yet. Um, it's what I'm doing in my private practice. Um, I've I'm going to have a book eventually on this, but I really love this process of using the permaculture design process, the methodology to build the business model, to do the, re the market research, to do network building, to develop the business in a professional way that is customer first, working from patterns to details, like really learning about the, the, the playing field that you're going to do business in before you implement anything so that you can design your details. So you're specifically doing things that are going to lay a solid foundation and serve many systems and functions, right? And so these elements are tech tools. They're things that a lot of businesses, coaches will tell you to do, but they're not, nobody's tell everywhere in a do it fast kind of mode. And so like people aren't uh, taking the time to design their businesses anymore. All the coaches are telling you, just get started, just take imperfect action, just, you know, just start doing it. And, and they're just not telling the stories of the, the, the people left to the wayside, broke and disenchanted, you know, because they just did that. And then they're just like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? So some people like to think about it. And I'm one of those. Anyhow. So the permaculture students, what would I tell somebody is what I'm one, some of the core aspects of this is like, one, you do not need to volunteer on somebody's farm for a few years to get enough practice to feel like you can be a professional. No way. No. The, you are a student. All biz, small business people are students that become professionals. And you have access to all the information that you need to start now 
believing in yourself as a designer and doing small projects at your home, document them. Start at home, make a list of what you could do at home that a permaculture, if you hired a permaculture designer, this is a great way. I used to do it all the time with my project. God, this thing just happened. I don't know how to deal with it. Well, if I hired somebody to do it and they came in and told me what they were going to do, what would they tell me? Right. So just think if I hired a permaculturist to come in and tell me how to improve my yard, how would, what would they tell me to do? Okay. I'm going to just take those notes. This is what they would tell me to do. I already know all the answers. And then do your home with design. You don't have to do it super elaborate. You're not trying to sell it to yourself. You don't need to be graphically everything, but like get a good, do the process. Go back to your notes you took in your class and do a small, humble, don't get caught up in it. Make a humble home design. But the main thing is that you know what to do first because you looked at what functions you need to have served at home. You know what systems you need to make those functions work and you know what elements to implant. And then take pictures of now do a project in an afternoon, take the prod, the video of it and take a still of it happening if you want. And you, and then, uh, or not a still, but a, a time delay, like a time release. Those are always cool watching a project happen in, in quick motion and then take pictures afterwards and be like, Oh, I just spent half a day doing something that made my place better. And you do six of those and you have six portfolio pieces of really cool stuff you did. And if you don't have a house, go do it for a friend and you don't even have to do it for free. You can do it for really cheap. You can do those first projects for other people for cheap, but enough that you feel good about it. Pay yourself 10 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour or whatever it's going to be for you. Just to feel like, yeah, I made money doing a little job for somebody putting up their their gutter water catchment barrel or putting a bed together or just i i went and talked with somebody for a couple hours and i and i gave them a really professional opinion about what i think their best options are and they paid me 50 bucks for the visit you know like do something like that and it's all market research it's all skill development and relationship development and you're getting paid while you're doing it so that you start believing yourself to be a professional you start building a portfolio of cool small projects and within a very short period of time you can be like i get paid to do permaculture and and you don't go do some big land design on your first project do you not ready for that you're gonna probably make mistakes that are costly and they're going to lose you not only reputation, but personal satisfaction and enthusiasm. But like, just start, you know, we don't make business cards anymore. You don't even need a website really these days, but you can just start making that your jam. You just do, you don't even need to promote. Everyone's got a personal network. This is the other thing that I teach people. The second thing, besides believing in themselves and just starting to do a few and cataloging their portfolio uh, is making a list of people they know that own homes or property that they could call and just learn about if you could do some dream project on your lot, what would it be? What's keeping you from doing that right now? Is there anything that you would want to do first just to like, that would make you feel the best? without getting into, I know this design for you and all that, but like, so that's the goal of this list. But first just make the list of everyone, you know, that's like close-ish and a good acquaintance that you could call up and have this conversation with. And um, that's one list. Another list is <clears throat> all the, the other permaculturists in your area. Anyone doing any kind of organic permaculture art, people doing really cool like hardscaping like wind chime gardens or um uh we were talking about water fountains he's like people that people things that people with money are putting into their yards that it's like oh wow this person's spending money on their yard a playscape for the kids network with these people but like the person who's putting in the like super cool roots playgrounds for people top dollar stuff network with these people get to know them be like hey you know i'm i'm doing 
permaculture design. And I just, I might be able to refer you or some to some of my clients. I want to know what you do. I want to know what your ethics are, your values, your system, your style. And when you're curious about them and you, you want to support them, <laughs> they're going to call when the client wants a garden, <laughs> right? So building like this networking list of other professionals, building guilds, you know, the book uh, Regenerative Enterprise is really uh, super awesome. I highly recommend it. And uh, they talk about the eight forms of capital and all this, but they talk about the regenerative enterprise ecosystems and the concepts. I was just like, uh, I highly recommend that. I, I loved reading the book. Uh, I want to read it. I took tons of notes. But the uh, regenerative enterprise ecosystem is it's guild building in the business world. You know, like, oh, well, we are supportive of these capitals. And, and these types of capitals are being supported and cultivated by this other company. And this other company takes care of the financial stuff really good, but they need other players to make what they're doing feed the other capitals and that's what we do so we just all come together into this synergistic referral network of a team that contracts each other out to do all the different things and everyone somehow gets their needs met right and these are just this is the way to think right this is how we're trained to think in permaculture um but not just in how the plants can be symbiotic and how you look at the different stories of canopy and the ground covers and the, how everyone, uh, Sarah Wu in my interview with her about the Envision Festival, uh, she, she had this great quote that I made into a highlight on my YouTube channel talking about how uh, all the, each human has its own place in the ecosystem. We're not all intended to be overstories. We're not all tended to be the fruit giver, we're not all intended to, you know, some of us are the mycelium, the earthworms, the, you know, we all have our different role. Anyhow, she said it more eloquently. But we got to think about that, our human ecosystem around us, if we want to have a thriving business, and this is permaculture, implementation and design. This is anybody who's in any kind of craft that there are small business people, they want to work with the local economy, circular economy, local regional resilience, networking, like really creating village, know who's doing what around you. And when you talk to people, talk to people as if you were trying to learn how you could introduce them to somebody else. Like really learn from people. What are they doing? What are they up to? Could I not only could I benefit from them or could they use my strip, but like, how could I introduce them into somebody else I know? because I asked them their needs and their, you know, what they're going through and um, what they have to offer. So those are two of the big things. And they're, they're both kind of market research, one talking with clients and learning what, where they're at with their whole situation and, and talking with other professionals. And then so much can come from that. We learn so much. It really unfolds purpose, mission, vision, but not from, oh, I had this idea pass through the winds of my mental activity and I grabbed onto that one and I decided that I'm going to stay obsessed with this idea and make it happen, um, which is, you know, more conventional. I've been really learning a lot to be like, okay, I'm going to hold that cool idea I got. I'm going to develop it. I'm going to work about it. I'm going to write on it, but I'm going to develop it by learning. Okay. I have an idea of who that's going to help. I'm going to, before I go too far, I'm going to go talk to them people <laughs> and learn what they need. Because then I can be like, oh, like right now I'm going through, I wanted to help regen. I wanted to do this permaculture design method for business because it revolutionized our farm. So I thought I was going to help farmers, like landowners, community builders do that. And I started doing that a little bit, but then I, I got kind of rebranded and I wanted to help more people. So I just like regenerative entrepreneurs, regenerative social and, and land-based or, or whatever your thing is. Basically, if you got a really great business that's helping out people and respecting the planet and, and the kind, I'm going to help you get your, your business going. Right. So the, I'm just kind of been opening up to clients. I've even got somebody who's doing relationship coaching right now for eco-minded people. Like really 
want to be open to help. But what they tell you, teach you about niching down. And, and I was learning something today. Someone was saying um, that the niche w- the niche that you start with is not likely to be the niche that you really end up serving in the long haul of your business. And I think pi- permaculture is pigeonholed into this idea of agriculture based. And there's many people that are purist on that. And God bless them. We, we really need more plants in the ground in general. And we also need our society to work good. We need people that have good ideas to, that want to benefit the world to have money and their, their needs met. And we have, we have a lot of needs beyond green things with roots in the ground, right? We, we, we live in a more dynamic universe. So even though we learned permaculture from that framework, now that we know how to think, we know how to design, we know how to look at the big picture and break things down into pieces and then really analyze them to see what's the most, the best strategy, not based on my ideas and what I want, but like what's going to help other people and how it's going to help them. And well, sorry, I'm rambling, but the idea is to <laughs> it's all apply good content. that to everything apply it to our business and it might deviate you from doing food forest installations to i don't know it might be kitchen gardens or it might take you into a passion of i'm going to be the i'm going to be the rainwater catchment guy or i'm going to be the actually animal husbandry is my my niche I don't need to do a huge design for everything. Like we learn in our permaculture courses that we can design the whole thing. And some things are best designed in parts, keeping the whole in mind. But like, actually I specialize in what I really love doing. I don't, I'm not great at everything. I lose my confidence when I try to do everything, but I'm really good at helping people create a good business design or um, take your pick, whatever your passion is. And it might be pond installations, you know? Um, but like, that's, that's something I would, I would invite people to is to really learn what people want in their field, pay attention to what kind of springs up. Like, Ooh, that's actually the thing that I'm most passionate about wanting to, even if you don't know how to do it yet, if you get sparked, like, dang, man, people keep saying bees and I don't know about bees yet but it wouldn't take me more than some weeks to be really good at knowing everything I need to know about bees, to be honest. Yeah. You and did. all of a sudden you got it. Yeah. That's something I'm changing uh, myself. So I was at the start, uh, basically see on YouTube, all these gardens and they show you the best permaculture food forest in an urban backyard and it's packed tight full of stuff. And then at the start, I was like, I want all that. And then as I went on and, family and think well i don't have time for that so what do you have time for well I have time for three chickens I have time for a small salad garden and some spuds don't uh-huh. have time for tomatoes peppers greenhouses glass houses so i've sort of settled on that so I said, well that's that's the limits of my growth in terms of growing food but then i have started now how do i apply that to the way i run the household as in waste as in the toxic products we use and then now yeah. we we vine applying it the how do we set up a sustainable business and how do we help people do them designs? So it's sort of it has definitely been a shift in me because as well, like there ain't no way I'm running a market garden by age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just don't have the time or the energy for it. So mm-hmm. I think that's one of the lessons I've learned over the last year is right. You don't. You have to sort of set your own limitations for in terms of what you like and what you want. You don't have to do everything in permaculture. Like you don't have to be right. building swales and hugel culture and all this stuff. Right. Well, back to the local, the regional resilience and the circular economy piece. And like one thing that I that I'm strong about is voting with our buying power. Is the is one thing that anyone can do anywhere. Is that if you're going to give your money to somebody. Give it to the person who's doing what you want to see done. If you can't buy those, if you can't make those tomatoes yourself, buy them from somebody who's growing them locally, organically, spend extra because they're doing what you're not willing to do to make the difference. And they need your support. 
if you send that money off to some California mega farm grower, that's yeah, I, I know seasonal is hard. And when you're living in cold climates, sometimes you got to buy what's coming from far away. But any chance you have of buying locally, that money will not make a dang difference to the huge producer in California, but it will be life changing for your neighbor and your neighborhood if you can filter your as much money as possible into your neighbor's pocket. And so that's where that's where we appreciate our place in the web of life and build these guilds and these relationships. And that's how we can feel good about not doing it all. Nobody can do it all. No, no business should be expected to do it all. And if some business isn't doing it all, they don't need our, our, our like poor words or down talk or, our, you know, judgment. They just need you to be doing the thing that you see not being done. Same thing when you're joining a community that comes up a lot when people are looking for community and they're like, Oh, this place is great, but it doesn't have that thing. That is my favorite that I said, I was only going to have a community. If it has this, <laughs> maybe that's the thing you're supposed to build, <laughs> you know, like get into the solution of it, you know? Um, Oh, I wanted to bring up, I, when I lost my train of thought, I remembered what it was. I was describing my niche moving and I went from landowners to all regenerative entrepreneurs, which I'm actually quite equipped to be working with at this point. I find that my methodology works across many things and I'm the more, and I have to work with more people to really understand better who didn't, but one niche that I've noticed is really uh, prime for what I'm offering is permaculture students that want to be permaculture professionals. Like the, the people I've worked with on that front, I got, I'm getting that down and I've really see, and I don't have to explain to them anything, get it so much more and that anybody who's a permaculture student that wants to bring permaculture into their profession, my mind sees expansive ways to take it out of the traditional, I just do big full property designs and implementations even, and if you want that to happen, I also can, you know, work people to that, but um, just to ignore, like I had the aha moment where I was like, man, like, it's hard to talk to everybody. It's hard to talk to all regenerative entrepreneurs. Like it's not specific enough. And like, it's hard to like make messaging that really speaks to them. And then I saw who I was helping and getting the most out of it. I was like, oh, I'm going to just slow down then. There's gazillions of permaculture tens of thousands of permaculture students that graduate wondering what's next like what do i do and i'm like oh shoot if i could help more people actually practice permaculture professionally i would be making geometric effect or uh impact with my efforts like every person i help that was a permaculture student that wanted to do good in the world actually be able to do lots of good in the world then like oh i'm i'm doing more good than i could do myself right so that's where I've kind of honed that in. And that's part of the process of working with people and um, gathering data. Well, that's where our podcast sits. Uh, that's why I done it. It was to learn about all the different professions and all the different options because I want to be a professional permaculture designer. Uh, and it was to offer that up. So it's a way of me learning and finding out all about these things and also sharing it for people. So if I come to you now as a, a permaculture student i've just graduated how does that help look like do a course is it one day one is it you mentioned coaching what would that look like well right now the way i've got things designed is that i have a six-week design process it's a program we do six weekly calls and in between calls i do more homework than most coaches and consultants would probably consent to um, I, I, I go, I've been like really wanting to learn and do a good job. So I've been like reading all the emails and, or all the, I give lots of writing homework and I comment on it and I just really help the person I'm working with go deep, do the research, ask deep questions, pull up all the limiting beliefs and the deep whys and, and get to know who they want to serve and like really learn what they want to say in their words. So I take people through deep, um, research period. So there's an assessment I do at the beginning. And then we spend about four weeks doing research and analyzing that research and just start understanding the world they want to get into better. Um, and then around the fifth and sixth week, I start 
taking all the information that we've gathered, the two of us together and independently, and I start doing what a permaculture designer would do for land. And I start looking at key functions and breaking into systems and elements and prioritizing. And I, um, I create a very uh, elaborate business plan, essentially, for them. Um, some people it gets a little bit more into life design too. It's not just business focused. Uh, so that works its way in there. And then I deserve, I deliver a, a timeline of sections and things that, and this all, most of it comes from them that they didn't, they have, well, we know what we need to do. At least we know what we need to do to learn what we need to do next, but we're just not, we need someone to walk us through that process and point out things and, and give observations from different perspectives on the sideline. And then all of a sudden, and then I do the hard work of like really creating a formal design to deliver. So that's what I do in six weeks right now with people. And then after that, anyone who wants implementation help, I have a virtual team, uh, some remote assistants I've been working with for some years and we can help with, I put together a custom implementation package depending on what their design offer asks for and what they want to do and not do. And then we can check stuff off the list, technical stuff, digital needs, and so forth. So those are my private services, um, but I don't do any implementation before we do a full design first. And then um, what I'm working on right now with the Permaculture Institute of North America is this um, program for essentially permaculture students that want to start doing permaculture professionally so I'm, design, I'm taking what I'm doing with private clients and I'm putting it into a course format and I'm going to do lessons and modules for people to watch at their own pace. And then I'm going to have a group program where we'll be meeting regularly with guest presentations, group discussions, mastermind meetings where we support each other with our questions and I'll be having my own Q and a time, like office hours for people that want to just ask me direct questions. So I'm taking my coaching package, making it less expensive for people, more comprehensive and offering it in a group setting for that particular niche of people. And I really, I've been studying masterminds and these kinds of things. I had the land stewards mastermind for a while. I'm designing one for community builders. And I really love this hybrid course coaching community centric community driven model of bringing people together, giving them the right information that they need and empowering them by helping them just get unstuck when they get unstuck. And that's where these regular come togethers are. So anyhow, that's what I'm designing. It's um, likely to kick off in January. And so I'm going to be promoting it through December. I'm designing it right now. I'm putting together, like I said, there's this, Right Livelihoods is a space on their Mighty Network group that I will, the, the URL is jumbly. Uh, maybe I'll make a pretty link eventually for it. But um, matter of fact, I will. By the, when we end this call, I'm going to make a link that says regenerationnationcr.com forward slash right livelihood with a dash between right and livelihood. And that's going to direct people to that feed on the Mighty Network. And then they can join the network from there and become a member of the Pina network and community. And there's lots of other great stuff going there. And we would love for people that want to, like, if you don't want to talk about business and permaculture mixing, like, cool, there's lots of Facebook groups for you. And actually there's other groups on the Pina platform that you would love. Um, but if you want to talk about this nebulous concept of becoming a permaculture professional in unique ways that we haven't thought of yet, as well as the more traditional ways, then we're going to be having those discussions and I'm going to be offering lots of free content based on what I'm putting together and, um, and putting this pro group program together eventually. And we're going to, yeah, we're going to get stronger together and more confident and more insightful and all that together. And that's what's, those are the three ways that someone can work for me with me um, to get their business off, off the ground and start making their, their dreams come true. Jason, that's fantastic. Um, we'll put all them links in the description. If you go and look, Jason, thank you very much for that. That was uh, a lot of information packed in a small 
small piece of time, but uh, I'm sure people can go over to your links and uh, find out more. Sure. I'll leave you a link for um, the eco aligned business design, which is uh, where I've got uh, where I tell you all probably too much about my, my whole package and my design process. Um, that's actually regenerationnationcr.com forward slash EBD. And, uh, that's where you can work with me directly and yeah, I'll give you all my social. It's everything is at regeneration nation CR and, there, and the YouTube channel is booming. There's lots of cool stuff there. I got lots of playlists with farm tours from cool permaculture farms and, uh, Wow, I've just really, I haven't had a ton of episodes, but the ones that I've produced have been some good ones. And uh, anyone interested in that field, uh, the regenerative field in general, or Costa Rica, and wanting to learn more about projects down here is going to really love what uh, I've offered so far. Yeah, so that's been Jason, Th Jason Thomas on the Permaculture Vine. Thanks very much. We'll see you all next week. Cheers. Okay. Cheers.